Hello and welcome to my podcast, Up Your Total Glow, your podcast for your body, mind and soul to support, guide and empower you to uncover the most glowing, healthiest and feel-good version of you. I am super excited that you are here because if you ask me, there's nothing that looks and feels better. In today's episode, I'm speaking with the absolutely amazing and brilliant Jeff Xiao. Jeff is a life and mind coach, NLP practitioner, and he helps unfulfilled millennials to create a meaningful life. He is also the founder of the Mind Access Life Coaching and a keynote speaker. And he has written the visionary ebook, which is a step by step guide to help you gain clarity on your life direction. And this is a beautiful interview full of so much wisdom and yeah, insights. And Jeff starts off by telling us his journey because he has not always been living such a meaningful and fulfilled life. Among many other things, he tells us or he answers the million dollar question, how can we create long lasting change? So if you want to change, if you are at a point in your life where something is not the way you want it, then this interview is a must listen for you. Please enjoy. Hello, Jeff. I am so excited that you are here today and I can't wait to dive into this conversation with you. How are you? Yeah, doing well. And thank you for having me here today, Ruth. It's a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Maybe to start off, could you just give a brief introduction of who you are? I know this is the million dollar question for us all, but you know, just a brief introduction of what you do. Yeah, so for me, I'm Jeff Seattle, the founder and head coach of Mind Access Life Coaching, and I'm also the co-founder of Australia's Apparel. And I'm just going to be talking more about my coaching. So my coaching is designed to help unfulfilled millennials create a meaningful life. And it sounds very simple, but it's not. It's basically taking someone from where they are to where they want to go. And my coaching bridges the gap. So that's kind of what I do. That's amazing. It doesn't sound simple to me at all, but it does sound amazing. And of course, I want to dive much deeper into this. But before we do so, I would like to know, have you always lived a really fulfilled life yourself? Because I'm guessing probably not. So can you maybe dive a little bit into your own journey? Yeah, so for myself, I found my way onto you know, this path of fulfillment, as I mentioned before. It's about helping people that you were two years ago as a coach. That's who you're best positioned to help. So for myself, I was anything but fulfilled two and a half years ago. I had been a drug addict for eight years, an alcoholic, and I had just come out of that period in time. Now, what caused me to change that is that even though I was doing quite well on the surface in terms of my job, in terms of my career, I really was very unfulfilled. I was very upset and I was very depressed about the way things were going in my life. Now, a, prom a promotion at work, kind of caused me to have that mindset shift because I was going to be given a lot more responsibility in my job as a project manager. And I realized that I couldn't do it if I was coming to work stoned, if I was going home and getting drunk and even more stones, things like that. So I knew I had to quit. Now I had bought a book called The 50th Law. And for anyone listening, I recommend this book if you're struggling with drug addiction. It is written by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. And it talks about the importance of sobriety. And this might sound a bit silly, but until this point in my life, when I was 24 years old, I had always thought that I'd be able to be successful in any way or form if I was a drug addict because it had worked until that point. But reading this book, I realized how much I was holding myself back and the drugs were just my way of not facing the things that I knew I had to face. So moving forward in time, I took steps to become sober. I started training a lot at the gym, reworked all my habits for six months. It was a long process, um, but it took about six months. And then on Christmas Day of 2020, I launched an Instagram page called Your Daily Purpose. Now, this page was about taking philosophical quotes from ancient, you know, with ancient wisdom like Confucius, uh, Sun Tzu, etc., and then putting my spin on it. And this page grew very quickly to about 3K followers in about six months. 
And then people started to DM me and say, you know, like this thought really helps. And a lot of those people from that page still follow me today on my coaching page uh, because they followed my journey the whole way. And what it made me realize though, is that people reaching out to, for me, to me for help made me feel quite fulfilled in a certain way. Mm-hmm. It made me feel as though the work that I was doing in the office and I was getting paid for that was nothing. I'd spend a lot of time working on this passion project, creating content and like writing and stuff like that. And I posted every single day for a long time. And that's what I really cared about. And I began to question, why is that the case? What is fulfillment actually? Mm. And fulfillment isn't always just linked to a dollar sign. It's linked more to who we are. And that's what really kickstarted that process. And I'll I'll cap it there because I'm sure we go a lot deeper, but that's how I found my way to where I am today. Wow. So beautiful and amazing and absolutely empowering. I love that you know, first of all, empowered yourself. And then now I'm empowering others through your own journey. I think this is so, so beautiful. Thank you so much um, for sharing. And yeah, there are so many questions in my mind, so many things I would like to dive deeper in. But maybe first off, why is it so important that we are actually sober to create a more meaningful life that's a great question and it's because drugs and alcohol give us the illusion that everything is okay see you could have a really high functioning job uh, like i did you could have all kinds of things right but deep down when there's no drugs and there's no alcohol and it's just you by yourself in a room with no one around you no distraction you know what the deal is you know that there's an issue you need to resolve. And that's the thing is that that feeling that weighs us down. And this thing that I talk about is past trauma. Mm. It's a lack of acceptance of yourself, insecurity. Mm. It's fear, it's limiting beliefs, things we've been told that we can or can't do. You know, not everyone wants to work in a high position role. Some people want to do something for themselves, but it's fear to go and do it. Mm. And the drugs and alcohol numb the pain. Let's say you're not doing the thing you've always wanted to do since you were a child. You wanted to be an astronaut. You never did it. How do you numb the pain? Well, you drink, you smoke, you take drugs, right? So this is how, this is why being sober is really important because when you're sober, you can't numb the pain anymore. You just have to face it. And a beautiful thing happens when you face it is that over time it hurts, naturally. You're finally confronting the things that we should have a long time ago. But as you grow in this process, you actually become stronger because you realize that you're now in control of things. You can actually create change. But if you're just numbing the pain, you can't create change because you're going to be stuck in the same loop. And that's self-sabotage. Mm, yeah, wow. Totally agree. And I love how you go back to know to that it's actually our deeper self, you know, how we have self-limiting beliefs, how we have trauma. And it doesn't have to be this big T trauma. It can be just um little things like someone left us out at school i don't know what that has actually created trauma within ourselves that is now ruling our life because i feel very often we are completely unaware of this and then react more out of fear instead of out of empowerment or what we would maybe be actually like to do or are here to do so thank you so much um for sharing this so I would love to ask a $1 million question. How do we create change then? So it sounds so simple when you say it, you, you know, you were in this state of numbing and then you realized, or maybe you didn't realize it first, but you read this book and then you realized, okay, I really have to change. You read it at the right moment for you and you took all these steps. You started to exercise. You probably changed your diet. You felt more and more empowered. It sounds easy, (laughs) yet I know if it was easy, we would all be doing it and not numbing our pain anymore with drugs, with food, with gaming, with porn, you name it. I guess it's a problem (laughs) that we are somehow all facing and becomes more and more out there because it gets easier and easier to numb the pain with all of these things. There's more food available and alcohol is legal. You know, we are all the time online, so we can just game and do these things. 
So how do we create change? Because change is hard. And like you said, painful. Well, you've made a lot of great points there. It's that there's a lot of mental oppression upon us to not make change, right? The moment that we think we want to create change, we can just go watch that show or have this fast food or porn, whatever it is. So many things we can look away from. And I did gloss over it earlier when I introduced that, you know, my backstory is that it was awful. Change is painful, right? Because the best way to put it is if you want to gain muscle and you go to the gym, it's going to hurt you. You have to lift more weights and it's going to end up damaging your muscle. But that's the only way you gain muscle. Mm. You have to actually tear the muscle fibers first. The same goes for our lives. So if we spend a lot of time in the same rhythm, we're not going to have any growth. So to create change, the first thing that must happen is you have to be very clear on why you want the change. Mm. Your reason why has to outweigh your current situation. So for example, if you want to, let's say, lose 10 kilos, your reason for losing 10 kilos must outweigh the pleasure of having bad food or bad habits. It must seriously outweigh to the point that you can no longer bear to be that person any second longer. Mm -hmm. That is called the tipping point. And for myself, I had that tipping point. I remember I was sitting <clears throat> on the train and I was reading this book as I was going to my job in the city. And I remember this tipping point very clearly. I remember I just shut the book and I just sat there and I said, I've had enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this another day in my life. And this was on August the 3rd, 2020. I still remember that day. Mm. And ever since then, I did literally what I did was I decided I could not do the same things I was doing. So what I did was I came home and I wrote down all of the stuff that I didn't want to be, right? Drug, drug addict, alcoholic, junk food, binger, you name it. I was in awful shape, Ruth. And, and I listed all the things that I wanted to be and I wanted to become. And I looked at the distinction. I looked at how far it was. And I decided that I was going to integrate those things straight away so i tried it the first time and i completely failed mm. because i tried to quit drugs and smoking and drinking on the same day it was awful i went through literal mental hell i was just in my bed just shaking and sweating it was awful mm. but then i decided okay this is not a smart way to do it i have to do it incrementally so i started to do it bit by bit by bit so i created a multi-stage program in my head of how i was going to do this i looked at all the bad things i was doing and i said okay i'm going to give them up one by one i'm going to give up drugs once that's all good, it took me about two months to get okay off that. Then I went, okay, I'm going to give up alcohol. It took me a little while, and then I said cigarettes. And I went bit by bit by bit. And every time I did a new stage, I got a new earring on my ear. So I have two earrings. I have an earring for the things that were my biggest vices, which is drugs, which is a uh, black earring, and silver, which is for smoking. Mm -hmm. So they're there. So every time I look in the mirror, I always see my accomplishments. Now, I'm not saying anyone has to do this. What I'm saying is that that's how serious I was. So if you want to create change, you have to be ready for pain, but you have to be so serious that you're not going to give up no matter what, because the outcome of what you seek is greater than what you currently have. Mm, beautiful. And thank you so much for being so clear and authentic here, because I personally see or get lots of clients who come to me and say, you know, I want a really quick approach to losing weight. But, and they don't say it like this, but they mean it. They want a quick fix and they don't really want to have a look at what actually caused them to be where they are now. They are not willing to go through this phase of pain, which you are describing, because it, it's not nice. <laughs> it's not beautiful. We probably don't look glamorous or feel glamorous while we're going through it. But like you said, it strengthens us and it's the only way through. I would love to hear a little bit more from a neurological point of view, what actually happens in the brain when we are trying to change or when we are going through that change because I know you've got all this knowledge and I think for me this is very empowering when we can actually understand this more from a physiological point of view. It would be my pleasure. So in the human brain or well especially the human brain we have something called a cerebral cortex. Now the cerebral cortex is what makes us human. It's the mammalian brain and it means that it allows for higher order thinking. The cool thing about the cerebral cortex is that it can be reorganized at will. 
So from a very basic neurological point of view, our brain is just a whole bunch of neurons joined together. Now they form different structures, but at the very base level, they're neurons. Our lines of information, for example, our memories, our habits, our patterns of behavior are simply neurons that join together in a certain way based on repetition in the past. Mm -hmm. So our brains have something called plasticity. So it's called neuroplasticity. And I'm going to go through it very quickly, but for anyone that's listening that wants to look into it, it's fascinating because your brain is something that you can structure. You can mold it to however you like. So neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself like a jigsaw puzzle at will. And there is a certain cap to this. For example, when we're young, our brains are more plastic, but the older we get, they become less plastic. So for example, there's an old saying, which is it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. For example, an 80 year old would be very hard to teach them something new compared to a child. But if you're in a median age and you're listening to this podcast, the likely fact is that you're around about 20 to 40, which means luckily your brain is very plastic. There is much that you can do with it. So when you want to create a new habit, the key is to compound that effect and decide what it is you want to leverage. So let's say you want to quit smoking. And this is exactly what I did. Whenever I wanted to smoke, I realized that there were triggers that go through my brain at certain times of the day. For example, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is when I would crave a smoke the most. A smoke was kind of like dessert. I recognized this trigger and I realized that I need to replace it with another trigger. So for example, instead of smoking, I would instead do 10 push-ups because 10 push-ups releases a similar amount of dopamine and endorphins as I would get from smoking a cigarette. But I knew that because it was comparable. Like what's the thing that I could link? And by doing so, you can swap your habit by simply reorganizing your patterns of behavior. And this is just with habits. You can make your brain learn new things, learn new skills, whatever you want to learn, you can literally download into your brain. And with compounding and doing it with consistency, you can literally make that yourself within six months to a year. You can just completely recha completely change yourself. That's the power of neuroplasticity. Thank you so much for sharing this because to me, I feel knowing this and, you know, this is scientifically researched and proven. This really empowers me because, you know, I might feel weak in at certain times or I feel, oh, everyone else can do this. You know, this Jeff person is so amazing. Yes, he's so incredibly smart. He could even do that when he was on drugs. You know how we all have our stories in our minds that actually limit us and yeah, don't actually help us to jump into the best version of ourselves. So I feel when we pull it all back and actually have a look at our human physiology, at our brain. And then here we all have this amazing ability of neuroplasticity, that which you so beautifully explained. This has nothing to do with, yeah, Jeff is so smart and maybe I'm not. We all have this amazing innate ability so we can all do it. I absolutely love that you explained this. Thank you so much. Would you like to add something here or shall we jump into a little bit of the emotional side of it? Because I also would like to dive into the emotions here. So now we know what the brain is doing and how we can actually facilitate this phase of change. But while we are going through all of those emotions, maybe could you explain a little bit on the emotional side as well, what's happening in our bodies and how we can help ourselves to understand this better so that we can, that when we are going through this change, we maybe have an easier time. For me, it's like this. Whenever I understand what's actually happening, for me, I yeah can much more make this work does this make yeah, sense yes so the 100 percent, because you know the emotions are really important and um it's funny i did a podcast the other day about this as well which was about um learning to sit with your emotions mm. and this is something that i think most of us don't really learn like certainly i was never taught it. i had never even heard of that mm. because emotions were always deemed as bad Right. And like, this is just the, my upbringing, the way I was raised is like, mm -hmm. you don't look at your emotions because that makes you less of a man. And that's just the way that, you know, it's always been. But then I began to realize that pushing your emotions away only magnifies the problem that you have because now you're choosing to ignore it completely. And that's a delusion. 
and that actually hurts you in the long term mm. but facing your emotions head on is that you don't necessarily have to run from them but you can just sit with them and start to observe where they come from why they're happening and if they represent how you feel right now about your present life or your past life and if you can draw a distinction between the two then you can begin to realize that emotions aren't a bad thing because emotions are actually showing you what needs to happen next yes. you need to forgive that person to do this you need to forgive yourself to do that and then you start to get some real momentum and that's part of the change process too is that uh, emotions are huge you know because as whatever you try to do and change in life your emotions will flare up because you're no longer comfortable mm. but that's where growth happens mm, beautiful I can very much relate to this and the way you handled your emotions I was the same I was like bottling them all up because I am strong and I can do this and my emotions really hurt me in the past I don't want to go there anymore and yeah this really doesn't work <laughs> i can totally say no that's not the way to go and i like or i love actually how you spoke about, about emotions more like signposts you know they are actually letting you know where you're at and giving you some feedback on okay maybe something in your life is actually not the way that it's really good for you or creating growth and instead of pushing them away or diving, you know, head into them and then drowning in them rather seeing them as signposts. Okay, they're telling you something. So what can you do about this? Did I understand this correctly? Yeah, pretty much. They're just like signs, like stop sign or saying, yeah. Why, what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. I totally love it. So tell us a little bit more about your Mind Access Life Coaching. I totally love the title already. So what are you offering there and what do your programs look like? Yeah, so what Mind Access Life Coaching offers is something called the Mind Access Method, mm -hmm. right? Which is basically two coaching programs um, based on like one deliverable. So you're going to get three things. Well, three things in that one deliverable. Mm -hmm. The one deliverable is that you will find some level of fulfillment in your life. The three things as a part of that is you create something that you're passionate about and that will give you a sense of purpose. Link it into a goal setting strategy that's literally actionable from years from now to the day. You can do daily actions based on the strategy. And you will also learn to overcome and confront your fears and limiting beliefs so that you can go and achieve that strategy without feeling bogged down. That's the mind access method. And I do that in terms of one-to-one -one sessions with my clients. Amazing. <laughs> totally awesome. I love the sound of that. So if someone is listening to you now and feels like, okay, that sounds all amazing, but I actually feel so lost within all of this. I don't know even, I don't even know my purpose or, you know, what I'm meant to do or where's my why? Do you have any thoughts on that or any helpful hacks what someone could do then? Or could they still come to you? I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but yeah, let us know. Well, I'd say come to me if you need, but if you want to action it yourself, what you can do is basically look back into your past and decide the things that you loved before money became an issue for you. Yeah. For example, money clouds a lot of judgment because when we have, the more we have, the more we want. And that can blur the lines between the things that we actually want from our lives, right? There's always two paths for everyone in their head. And I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, there's the path of greed or the path of fulfillment. You have to pick. Now, the only way to decide what will actually give you fulfillment is you must go back into your life and look carefully at the things you love. Most likely the things that you love are free. There's a huge thing in our society today where even your side hobby, everything has to be monetized, right? I enjoy doing photography in the afternoons. Now I have to monetize it. I enjoy writing poems on the weekend. Now I have to monetize it. That just drags the fun out of it. It takes the fun away from your life, mm -hmm. right? But the point is, is that once you discover the thing that you do for free because you love, that is what you can actually monetize because that is something that you would put 100% of your heart in and people will pay for it. That is a passion. Now, the purpose isn't designed by what you do. It's about who you become. As you go along this process of change to achieve your passion and make it a reality, you can't retain the same person that you are today because there are things that are stopping you from achieving that anyways. So deciphering and getting clear on the person you want to be 
is really important because that's the purpose. The purpose is who you want to become. The what you do is merely matched to the level of person you become. Because for example, you wouldn't put someone that ran the register at McDonald's as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. They couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. The same way for us too. We couldn't handle our passions if we're not first clear on the person we want to be at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. I feel exactly the same. I'm 100% with you on that too, of course. Um, I would love to jump just a little bit back into how does movement or exercise and nutrition help us to yeah to make all these changes happen and to empower us along the way you said already a little bit but i would love to dive a little bit deeper in yeah so you know nutrition i think there's an old saying it's uh you are what you eat right yeah and nutrition is a basic level because if you're not eating the things that you need i know there's a huge thing in today's society to you know cut out all carbs or cut out all sugars or mm-hmm. just eat carnivore diet you know like the whole fad thing right especially with the whole liver king i'm sure you, you know about it but these things are unrealistic because they're not providing you the basic building blocks you need to live a healthy life you need to eat right so when you have the right foods from you know someone skilled like ruth helping you out then you'd be able to feel great and have actually have the energy to do what you want in life so that's your basic steps is like what are you actually putting into your body you're drinking enough water are you eating the right foods okay cool now you've got that you've got to make sure your body's actually finely tuned because think of yourself as a driver your brain is a driver your body is your car Mm. if your car hasn't been up in service it's going to break down right Mm. so exercise daily exercise it doesn't matter if you go for a 30 minute walk doesn't matter if you train for three hours doesn't matter what you do do something get the blood pumping you're going to feel better you release endorphins it's literally a natural antidepressant that's been given to us mm. from I nature know. i know, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. we've got it all within us and yet so often we are not using it or we don't know how to support our body's best our to actually uncover our best version so yeah totally i love what you're saying of course and you are such a beautiful example of this because i know that and you said this that you know have used the movement the exercise to actually help you through this process and yeah you look amazing and you're getting stronger and you love being at the gym and you're regularly posting things that you have achieved now and i feel this is so empowering for yourself and also for others to see i would also hear love to hear a little bit about your ebook so can we dive a little bit into your ebook so what is it about and tell us the title yeah so the ebook's called the visionary and what it is it's like it's a book that's gonna help you like if you don't have anything to do with me but you download that book and do that book step by step you will have a a clear answer on at least what you want to do in the next year Mm. like it's got a sequence of basically half of the book is a workbook the other half is like an info pack showing you why it is it's important to understand what it is you want to do with your life for real and then a step-by-step process that shows you the seven different areas of life right and where it is you are now versus where you want to be you will turn into a goal set and you can action that stick it on your wall, whatever you want. But that's the purpose of the book. Amazing. You are amazing. I'm such a huge fan of your work and of you. Could you please share three gold nuggets with my listeners? So just little snippets of your wisdom. If they want to feel empowered empower themselves want to start somewhere just three little gold nuggets i know this is tough because your mind is probably full and exploding you've got all these amazing pieces of wisdom but yeah if you could reduce it to three okay number one if you want to do something and you feel like you should wait until tomorrow remind yourself that tomorrow may never come Mm. Life is extremely short and we just don't realize it because we're always caught up being busy. But Mm -hmm. if you look at how quickly your life, I mean, look at how quickly 2022 has gone. It's disappeared before our very eyes. If you want to do something, take action, do it today, do it tomorrow. Don't wait any longer. That's my first nugget. My second nugget is that 
without having an element of discipline in your life, it's very unlikely you will achieve much because discipline is the ability to do things when you don't want to do it. And this is key because as you go and, you know, you want to change your life and create something better, most of the time, you're not going to want to do it. You're not going to want to work out late at night. You're not going to want to eat the right foods. You're not going to want to drink water, but you just have to do it because if you don't do it, then what you want is never going to become a reality. Mm -hmm. So discipline is number two. And number three is consistency. Consistency to be able to say, okay, I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep doing it until I achieve it because it's going to give me the life that I want. And the only way to get from where you are to where you want to go is with consistency because it compounds over time. It's like that formula in math, um, X to the power of three or whatever it is, right? It's every daily action you take over time it compounds with the effect that you see. Now, if you combine urgency, which is time, with discipline with consistency you're going to achieve whatever you want mm. but you first have to decide why is you doing it and what exactly it is you're aspiring towards and that's my three nuggets i guess mm, beautiful thank you so much where can we find you jeff you can find me all on the internet but i'll tell you exactly where so you can find me at instagram mind access life coaching linkedin my name jeff ciel uh tiktok mind access life coaching and Facebook, Mind Access Life Coaching, and my website too, which is mindaccesslifecoaching.com.au. And uh, yeah, you can find me in any of these realms of the internet. Absolutely amazing. And of course, I will put all of these links in the show notes. Is there anything that we haven't really touched upon that you would still like to share today? There was one thing um, that you mentioned a little while ago, mm -hmm. which was about how, you know, some people listening might feel like um you know like jeff is all these things and you know can i really achieve this change mm. and i just want to compound on that and to say that while i may be okay at some things i'm not okay at other things like for example yeah. i was never historically good at sport mm. i was never historically good at music or languages but academics and kinesthetics these kind of things so everyone has like a very diverse set of talents but society Tell, there's a very famous quote by Albert Einstein, which is, if you judge a fish by its, its ability to walk on land or something like that, then you're going to think that that fish is dumb. Mm. And this is the education system. It tells us we all need to be good at this one thing. But realistically, humans are so diverse and talented. And I don't even have nearly the same amount of talents that you do or someone else does. It's just the way I was able to express it was suitable for the system at that time. Mm. So I just wanted to come back to that because for anyone listening, if you want to create change, it's not about what I've done, but about you want to do. It has to be to your strengths. And if you follow that, you will achieve success. Mm, absolutely. So beautiful. And again, so empowering. And I agree fully with this. We are all so very individual and so very different. And we have our unique talents. And yes, we are not all strong in the same thing which is beautiful because otherwise it would be really boring and life wouldn't be juicy and fun at all but thank you so much for pointing this out again i just feel you are so empowering i love the wisdom that you share i love your mission in life and yeah thank you so much was there something else you wanted to add yes thank you for having me it's been a pleasure Ah. Uh, it was absolutely my pleasure and I feel there's so much more we can talk about. So maybe let's have another conversation, but thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, Jeff, for making our world a healthier, happier place. You are amazing. You are a total rock star and I'm super grateful for everything that you do. And I absolutely mean that. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. I appreciate you. Mm. If you love and enjoy my podcast, I would be beyond grateful if you could help me on my mission to make our world a healthier, happier place. And you can do so by liking, subscribing to, sharing and reviewing my podcast because this will help that others can find my podcast and all this knowledge that is in there and those amazing practitioners I know that you were born to live your best life and to feel absolutely amazing in your precious body, in your brilliant mind and in your boundless soul. So what are you still waiting for? 
please make sure you do. I believe in you. I'm your biggest cheerleader. Keep glowing. Much love.